basic medical sciences welcome in this lecture we are going to talk about the skull as a whole uh, we're going to cover the external and internal surface of the base of the skull we will talk about the fossa, the temporal fossa, infratemporal fossa, pterygopalatine fossa. We will talk about the orbit, the nasal cavit, and the hard palate. Right, so buckle up. Right, so uh, this is the anterior aspect of the skull called norma frontalis. Right, so the most part of the forehead is formed by the frontal bone. Right, it's smooth and convex. But going down, you can see that it's interrupted by the eye sockets, the orbit, um, and the uh, piriform aperture, apertura piriformis, right? Uh, they are also the right and left maxillae, right? Right and left maxillae, right? And these, they form the, what, the upper jaw. And right below here, you can see the infraorbital foramens, the infraorbital foramens. You can also see right and left zygomatic bones, right, or cheekbones. And going down, uh, there is mandible for the lower jaw. And you can see these two foramens, uh, the mental foramens, foramen mentale, right. Let's have a closer look on the orbit itself, right. So the orbit is a cavity in the shape of a rounded four-sided pyramid right so all pyramids they have a base and the apex right so the base of the pyramid are due to orbit right this opening and the apex the apex is uh it goes like uh deeper and medially on the uh, root of the nose and the walls it is the superior wall that's the roof the inferior wall that's the floor uh the medial wall the medial wall here, and the lateral wall, right? The bones that form the orbit are lined with periosteum, called the orbital periosteum, or the periorbita, right? So let's look at the orbital opening, aditus orbitae, right? So this is the uh, opening of the orbit, right? So it is margins, the superior margin or the superior border, margo superior, is formed mainly by the frontal bone. Uh, the inferior border, margo infraorbitale, uh, is formed, you can see here, uh, by the this part of the maxilla and the zygomatic bone. The lateral border, you can see the lateral border here, the most part is formed by the zygomatic bone and the medial border, Right, so it is the frontal bone above, right, and the lacrimal crest, crystal lacrimalis, right. Okay, uh, then next we we'll talk about the walls, right. I told you the orbit has superior wall or the roof, inferior wall or the floor, the medial and lateral wall, right. So we are starting with the superior wall, Paris superior. Right, so the superior wall of the orbit is formed by the orbital part of the frontal bone here and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, this one, the one we can, which I covered right now, that's the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Right, so there are some observable features which we can see in this view, right. So firstly, there is optic canal, canalis opticus here. This one, it actually pierces the um, lesser wing of the sphenoid. You can see the lacrimal fossa, uh, fossa glandule lacrimalis, right? That's where the la uh, lacrimal gland, uh, the, the lacrimal sac will be, not the lacrimal gland, because the gland is on this side, right, on the outer side, and then the lacrimal sac on the medial where the fossa is located. I will show you later. Uh, right, on this bone, you cannot see these uh, the next two parts, the fovea trochlearis and the spina trochlearis, the trochlear spine. You cannot see them, but they are there medially, right? Uh, and the most important, the trochlear spine is actually for attachment of the tendon of the uh, extraocular muscles, particularly the superior oblique muscle, right? The medial wall, 
Paris Medialis, right? So it's formed by you can see here from the uh, from the anterior part there is uh the lacrimal crest, uh lacrimal bone, the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone, lamina orbitalis, osis ethmoidale, and to the back you can see here this is the sphenoid bone, right? Or sphenoidale, right? So the ethmoid bone articulate with the frontal bone through a suture called sutura frontoethmoidalis and upon that articulation there will be foramens the anterior uh, ethmoidal foramen foramen ethmoidale anterior and the posterior ethmoidal foramen foramen ethmoidale uh, posterior the lateral wall paris lateralis right so uh, the uh, first bone is uh, the orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid is the it makes the lateral wall and uh next one there is the zygomatic bone right this zygomatic bone right so this wall it actually separate the orbit from the uh middle cranial fossa right and then the other thing about uh like this part of uh, this part of the wall formed by the zygomatic bone, uh, there will be a foramen there. It's called, uh, firstly, it, it separates the orbit from the temporal fossa. That's the first thing. And then uh, there is a superior orbital fissure. This superior orbital fissure, it separates the roof from the lateral wall, right? And then the zygomatic orbital foramen, foramen zygomatic orbital, it opens through here. That's what I wanted to, to mention earlier on. All right. Okay. The inferior wall, that's the floor or the Paris inferior, right? So the inferior wall is formed by the orbital surface of the body of the maxilla here. The orbital surface of the zygomatic bone here. And the orbital process of the palatine bone, you can see it here in yellow, right? If you remember the two processes of the um, palatine bone, there's orbital process and sphenoidal process. And remember that notch in between those two. And if the body lodges there, there will be a sphenoethmoidal foramen. I will talk about it, right? But now we are talking about the flow, right? So the flow is formed by the orbital process of this palatine bone here in yellow right so um there is inferior orbital fissure fissura orbitalis inferior this fissure is uh, it, it separates the inferior wall or the flow from the lateral wall there is a uh, infraorbital groove sulcus infraorbitalis right this is that groove right and it goes deeper as an infraorbital canal and it leads here to the anterior um, anterior aspect of the face this foramen is called the infraorbital foramen infraorbital foramen okay uh so let's have a closer look again on the contents of the orbit right so i told you on the the lesser wing of the sphenoid is pierced by the optic canal the optic canal firstly it carries the optic nerve right uh but these uh structures uh, i have a, a a better look because you need to know because uh the orbit it carries a lot of things firstly uh the the eyeball then the extraocular muscles the nerves the vessels right so i will have another look right but for now i just want you to appreciate this part called the nasal lacrimal canal right so this nasal lacrimal canal um before that i will need to show you the production of the tears right so this is the eye right the lacrimal gland so uh, upon production of the tears the tears will go medially through the superior lacrimal canal and inferior lacrimal canal to the lacrimal sac right thus uh this is the part which lodges into the lacrimal fossa, the lacrimal sac. And then down to the nasal cavity via the nasolacrimal duct. Nasolacrimal duct. Right. So this is very important. I have another view here. You can see the nasolacrimal duct here. 
uh, so this will be this area will have the orbit and here also another orbit right so the superior and inferior uh, lacrimal canals draining into the lacrimal sac and then down to the uh, inferior nasal meatus the anterior part to be more specific right okay we will talk about that so uh firstly you need to know that um there is uh these muscles the extraocular muscles they f they form like a tendinous ring or annulus of zin right so this ring actually it um separates the contents of the uh, superior orbital fissure into those inside the ring and those outside the ring right so outside the ring there is um a way to remember you just say leave a function test leave a function test for l uh the lacrimal nerve function the frontal nerve and test the trochlear nerve the cranial nerve number four right that's what's outside the tendinous ring and then inside the ring the nerves you find there includes uh firstly the branches of the oculomotor nerve right the superior division then the inferior division you will find it down here the inferior division of cranial nerve 3 uh, you find the nasociliar nerve and the abducens nerve the cranial nerve number six right so those are the nerves another structure which you will find there in the superior orbital fissure is the superior ophthalmic vein in the superior orbital fissure so the inferior orbital fissure here in the inferior orbital fissure you will find the inferior ophthalmic vein right okay uh, other structures which you will find in the inferior orbital fissure includes the maxillar nerve uh, the second branch of the trigeminal nerve you find the pterygopalatine ganglion and the pterygoid nerve right then uh this is the optic canal right in the optic canal will find you find the optic nerve the cranial nerve number two and the ophthalmic artery here right okay so uh i'll just uh, give you the names of the muscles right so this one is a lateral rectus inferior rectus medial rectus um superior rectus uh this one is superior oblique and this one is laveta palpebrae, right? Okay, so uh, you just need to pay attention. Uh, things which you uh, you find it within the ring and outside the ring. Liver function test. Okay, uh, the next part, the lateral aspect of the skull, norma lateralis, right? So what do you find here? So if you look, the first prominent thing you will see is the superior temporal line. Linear temporalis superior. And below it, you will find the inferior temporal line. Linear temporalis inferior, right? Then there is this arch called the zygomatic arch, right? This is called the zygomatic arch and is formed by posteriorly, uh, the the two thirds are formed by the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and then the anterior two thirds, uh, anterior one third, is formed by the um, temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Right. So uh, this is very important because uh, it's also you have a, a border which separates the. Uh, temporal fossa, fossa temporalis, and the infratemporal fossa, fossa infratemporalis. Where is the board exactly, right? So the lower margin of this, of this arch, is the actual board which separates the superior, uh, the superior part will, which will be the fossa temporalis, and then the inferior part will be the fossa infratemporalis, right? Other things which you will find here, the external acoustic meatus right the external acoustic meatus is it goes deeper here and it's about two centimeters and the opening is called the porous acousticus externus the opening um there is the mastoid process processus mastoidus here 
uh, for this is where the sternocleidomastoid a sternocleidomastoid muscle will attach okay <laughs> and then uh, there is a styloid process processus styloidus this this uh, point a sharp process right so um the other thing you need to know that mastoid process in infants you won't find it right but as uh, we mature this will uh, will be more prominent right and another important fossa you find it if you cut you cut here on the maxilla and here if you cut the you remove this zygomatic arch you see another fossa called the pterygopalatine fossa right it's deep inside right so in the next part we are going to cover these fossas the fossa temporalis fossa infratemporalis and the pterygopalatine fossa right so let's start with the temporal fossa the temporal fossa is highlighted here right so what are the borders superiorly and posteriorly is formed by the superior temporal line linear temporalis superior inferiorly is formed by the infratemporal crest right so this is actually found on the sphenoid bone and is around this level but on this view you can't see it exactly i'm sure i will show you this crest uh, later right crista infratemporalis then uh, laterally there is the inferior margin of the zygomatic bone zygomatic arch arcus zygomaticus right the inferior margin I told you right and then uh the anterior wall right the anterior wall is uh like um the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone faces temporalis osis zygomatis right and the uh, processus zygomaticus osis frontalis right that's the zygomatic process of the frontal bone here the zygomatic process of the frontal bone okay uh now let's look at the floor right so which bones form the floor of the of this fossa right firstly there is um temporal surface of the frontal bone here the in latin thesis temporalis osis frontalis external surface of the parietal bone thesis externa osis parietalis the temporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid here that's the temporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid thesis temporalis ale majoris osis sphenoidalis and the squamous part of the temporal bone pars squamosa osis temporalis right so you can see in this region these four bones articulate and is particularly weak this region right so it is a special name it's called the terion the terion is weak right so um the temporal fossa communicates with the infratemporal fossa how there is a gap between this flow and this zygomatic arch right that's how it communicates with the infratemporal fossa through that gap and there is um, a zygomatico temporal foramen foramen zygomatico temporale right okay uh, next is the infratemporal fossa fossa infratemporalis right so you can see it here right so it is uh these walls the anterior wall is formed by the infratemporal surface of the maxilla right that's the infratemporal surface of the maxilla right um superiorly it's limited by the inferior orbital fissure right fissura orbitalis inferior here um right so on the anterior wall the most prominent uh, part is called the tuba maxillae the maxillary tuberosity and on this tuberosity you can see the alveolar foramens foramina alveolari right and they go deeper as uh, alveolar canals right transmitting the nerves and vessels to the upper tip right the 
superior wall or the roof right so the roof is formed by the uh, faces infratemporalis ale my majoris osis phenoidalis is just the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid right it's here right and also there is uh, this crest is very important it's called the infratemporal crest right infratemporal crest right uh, the roof is pierced by two important foramens the oval foramen which is big and oval is called foramen ovale and the spinous foramen foramen spinosum right it's uh, on like near the spine of the sphenoid right it's small and it's round right so you can see it here so that's the foramen ovale this one and below you can see on the label that's foramen spinosum other foramens which you can see in this view is around foramen foramen rotundum superior orbital fissure uh, optic canal right but don't worry now i just wanted to show you the foramen ovale and the foramen spinosum uh the medial wall right so the medial wall of the infratemporal fossa is formed by the lateral plate of the pterygoid uh process right this one is called lamina lateralis processus pterygoidus right that's what forms the medial wall right so it's separated from the anterior wall by the pterygomaxillary fissure right so there is a fissure here it's it separates this um this uh medial wall from the anterior wall right the pterygomaxillary fissure the pterygomaxillary fissure the lateral wall you uh, is formed by the ramus of the mandible right so we will need the mandible here to form the lateral wall then the posterior and inferior walls are open right they don't have any borders they are they are, they are open right so deep inside there is uh, the next fossa the pterygopalatine fossa right so the pterygopalatine fossa is actually a small elongated pyramidal space situated below the apex of the orbit right so it is uh, the following walls anteriorly it is um faces infratemporal temporalis maxillae right the infratemporal surface of the maxillae here that's the anterior wall the posterior wall there is a root of the uh, pterygoid processes of the sphenoid bone right processus sphenoid uh, pterygoidus osis sphenoidalis processus pterygoidus osis sphenoidalis right that's a posterior wall the medial wall on the medial wall there is uh, the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone lamina perpendicularis osis palatine right is this bone which you can see here right and if you remember i told you about it's, it's two processes it is this um sphenoidal process which is here and the orbital process which is here right so if the sphenoid uh, bone comes here it will be uh, the the notch in between these two processes will become a foramen called um the sphenopalatine foramen is very important for the communication with the nasal cavity right the next wall is the superior wall right the superior wall is formed by the maxillary surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid faces maxillaris ale majoris osis sphenoidalis right so uh these are some of the communications as i told you the sphenopalatine foramen for the communication with the nasal uh cavity right where is it here it is right next you can see here the inferior orbital fissure for the communication with the flow of the orbit you can see the pterygomaxillary fissure for the communication with the infratemporal fossa here is the palatine canal for the communication with the roof of the oral cavity that's the palate here there is a palatovaginal canal palatovaginal canal for the communication with the nasopharynx the pterygoid canal right with the cranial cavity uh that's middle cranial fossa 
but uh you know if you look on the base of this cow you see that this canal the pterygoid canal it actually goes to the base of the skull right so i think both are correct right so my professor told me that it communicates with the base of the skull right but here he's saying it's the middle cranial fossa so listen to your professor right cool right the next is the round foramen right uh foramen rotundum right it communicates with the cranial cavity particularly the medial cranial fossa again and then yeah that's all okay uh and next we are going to have a posterior aspect of the skull norma occipitalis right so most parts are formed by uh, you can see the parietal bones right parietal bone um left and right there is uh, the squamous part of the occipital bone here. And also on the posterior wall, you can see the mastoid uh, processes, mastoid processes, the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. All right. Um, then there is external occipital protuberance, which you can see here, and the superior nuchal line. Below, there is an inferior nuchal line inferior nuchal line right so um this line the superior the the superior nuchal line is very important because it actually separates like uh the head from the neck so going down is will be the beginning of the neck uh the next thing which i want to talk about are the sutures right so this suture is called the sagittal suture right and on the side here, there is it's called a lambdoid suture. Lambdoid suture. Uh, right? And uh, within the suture, sometimes you find a bone. It's called they are called sutural bones, right? Within the sutures, we can find them like a separate bone, sutural bone. Um what else? Right. So those are the most important things, right? Okay. The superior aspect of the skull, norma verticalis, right? So you can see the bones first, the frontal bone, the two parietal bones, the occipital. You can see the sagittal suture here, and this suture is called a coronal suture, right? Coronal suture. And the lambdoid suture I showed you in the previous picture is here. And this region where these three bones are meeting is called the lambda. And this region where these uh, three bones are again, the frontal and then the two parietal bones is called the bregma, right? Okay. Ah, right. Okay, so these are just Latin names. So the uh, sagittal suture, sutura, sagittalis, and the coronal suture, the uh, sutura, coronalis. And the lambdoid suture is sutura lambdoidea. Right. The other thing which you should be able to see here, but you can't really see, is uh, like the superciliary arches, arcos superciliaris. Right. So if in this view, you can see them, the superciliary arch, superciliary arch. Right. So is the point of convexity of this of this bone, of the frontal bone. Right. You can also the tuba frontale right the frontal tuba uh again like these tubers are found also on the parietal bones right those points of convexity they're called tuba parietale right so here i think around here that's where you find the tuba parietale okay uh, this is the internal surface right in the internal surface uh, okay firstly i'll show you the bones the frontal bone, the parietal bones, and the occipital, right? So the most important thing is this, um, on this suture, on the sagittal suture, you find the groove for the superior sagittal sinus, right? It's very important, groove for the superior sagittal sinus. That's number one. Number two, if you look here, you see these grooves, right? So these are actually grooves for the middle meningeal artery, right? Grooves for the middle meningeal artery. And here you will find other grooves. It's groove for the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery. 
right and this suture the coronal suture sagittal suture and the bregma with the lambda okay now i uh, should take a break two or three minutes and come back so that we can talk about the base of the skull right so um this is uh like division how you divide the skull into uh the vault right and the base of the skull right so the imaginary line i would like to use the raid space line right this one is uh what we mostly use right so yeah, this line uh, goes through the infraorbital margin margo infraorbitalis uh, via the external acoustic mutus and the base of the mastoid right so this line is used to separate the skull into the cranial vault and the cranial base right so uh the cranial base first it is the internal surface in the internal surface you will find three cranial forces and all this this view is actually the external surface right so don't worry about the labels i want to show you the bones first right so um this these bones are the two maxillae right and the intermaxillary suture right uh, so these processes are actually the palatine processes of the maxilla forming the bone palate and if you go like uh, a little bit to the back you see the horizontal place of the palatine bone in yellow you see the vomer in blue this is the uh, sphenoid bone articulating with the uh, basilar part of the occipital bone right so this is the occipital bone and it is occipital condyles for the articulation with the um, axis right the, the spine right and the foramen magna very important don't forget about it and here in purple these are temporal bones right and this part uh like going inside it's the petrus part or the pyramid right okay don't worry we will uh, go deeper right so in the next part i'm going to help you divide the external base of the skull into three parts right the anterior part middle part and the posterior part the anterior part is mainly the bony palate right so it mainly cover uh the the palatine process of the maxilla and this uh, horizontal plate of the palatine bone right until to until this end the posterior nasal spine right so from there until you reach the imaginary line which passes on the front of the foramen magnum this is the uh, middle part and from here to the external occipital protuberance that's the uh, posterior part right so let's start with the anterior part i told you the anterior part is mainly the bony palate or palatum osseum right so you can see here uh, this bony palate uh, is formed by uh, the palatine processes of the maxilla right a uh, processus palatinus maxillae and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone lamina horizontalis palatini here right uh, so most prominent features firstly lam uh, sutura transversa the transverse suture is this suture the transverse suture right is between the maxilla and the palatine bone particularly the palatine process of the maxilla and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone the median suture sutura mediana is this suture right uh it's also called the intermaxillary suture and interpalatine but this whole suture is called the median suture sutura mediana we can also see the incisive foramen foramen incisiform right here right so on this model you can't see exactly the next bone which i'm to, going to talk about uh the incisive the os incisive os incisiform right so that bone is found on here right so it's joined uh to the maxilla here uh, by the what by the incisive suture sutura incisiform right you can't see it here 
right and uh the next part the um, great palatine canal right so the great palatine canal you remember this right so this is the medial uh view on the maxilla right so you can see the sulcus uh palatinus major right so it's the greater palatine groove right so the palatine groove uh, of the the palatine groove on you which you can see again on the on the palatine bone it forms a canal this canal canalis palatinus major right so the, those two forms this canal and this canal will open through the greater palatine foramen right on the roof of the mouth right you can also find uh yeah of yeah that's what i told you the uh foramen palatinum maius the greater palatine foramen then the um, palatine groove so so see palatine right and the the canal canalis palatinus my minor right the lesser palatine canal uh, that one again you find it is just behind this and the openings are not labeled are not labeled here but you can see this is the greater palatine foramen the lesser palatine foramen or the smaller one the minor is here here right and uh, the posterior nasal spine the posterior nasal spine right so you will find it here and this is actually the part formed by the what by the palatine bone right so you can see this in another view in uh, a more clear way okay now the middle part right so the middle part the first thing you need to note is the horn the two horn these openings right so it's actually communication between the nasal cavity and um and the nasopharynx okay there is a uh, pterygoid processes processus pterygoidae these are the pterygoid processes here and here the oval foramen foramen ovale i told you this one this is the foramen ovale right and just below it you see on yeah right above my pointer you can see another foramen is called what the uh, foramen spinosum right foramen spinosum next you see the spine of the sphenoid bone right but you can't see it here exactly but if you cut this uh this steroid process you can actually see it here the spine of the sphenoid bone then there is a groove for the auditory tube sulcus tube auditive is also seen in the middle part uh the sphenopetrosal fissure and the this should be petrol occipital fissure fissura uh, petro occipitalis not a petal but petro occipitalis right so let me show you this too uh it's easy right look the names sphenopetrosal, petrosal right you just need to find the petrous part and the sphenoid bone so in between that's where you find the uh, sphenopetrosal fissure then the next one is uh petro occipital you need the petrous part and the occipital bone here you can see the basilar part so in between that's where you find the petro occipital fissure fissura petro occipitalis right foramen lucerum right this foramen is very important because uh, many people confuse this foramen with the um, opening for the internal carotid right so i will have a clear view on this foramen right but it's found here foramen lucerum okay the carotid canal of course the carotid canal the external opening is here right and the internal opening is on the apex this is the external opening right that's the carotid canal the mandibular fossa fossa mandibularis for articulation with the mandible here right forming the temporal mandibular joint and anteriorly you actually find the articular tubercle tuberculum articulari it, that one will prevent the anterior dislocation of this temporomandibular joint okay uh, that was the middle part now the posterior part on the posterior part the most uh, prominent thing i told you 
uh, the line is just anterior to the foramen magnum. So the first thing you will see is the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum, this big foramen, right? Okay, and uh, you see occipital condylos, condylos occipitalis. These two for articulation uh, with what? Uh, with the spine. Right. So about the foramen magnum, don't worry, I, I I will tell you everything that goes through this foramen, right? Including the spinal, uh, the spinal cord, arteries, ligaments, everything that goes in there. I will show you in another view, right? The jugular foramen, foramen jugulare, right? So this is the jugular foramen. You see? Here, that's the jugular foramen. I will also tell you what goes through that for a man. The styloid process. Uh, styloid process is this one, this sharp one. The styloid process. And this process is called the mastoid process. In between those two, you will find the stylomastoid foramen. Foramen, stylomastoidium, right? In between these two. So the facial nerve will actually exit through this part. Okay, we will talk about the facial nerves later. Don't worry. Right, so I told you this is the mastoid process. Processus mastoidus here for the att attachment of the stenocleidomastoid muscle. Okay, uh, now let's look at the internal surface of the skull. Right, so this is just the basic presentation of the internal surface. Right, so it has like these three forces. The anterior cranial fossa, fossa crani anterior, the middle cranial fossa, fossa uh, crani media, right? So in these two, that's where you find the cerebrum, the cerebrum. The posterior cranial fossa, fossa crani posterior, in this you find the cerebellum, right? So we will talk about these fossa one by one, right? Starting with the anterior cranial fossa, fossa crani anterior, right? In this fossa, you find the frontal lobes of the brain, right? What are the boundaries of this anterior cranial fossa, right? Anteriorly and on the sides, you find the frontal bone, right? Post frontally. Posteriorly, firstly, you will find the free margins of the lesser wing of the sphenoid here. Next, the anterior clinoid processes, right? Processus clinoidea, clinoidae anteriores, right? Again, they belong to the sphenoid bone. And the sulcus chiasmaticus, chiasmaticus, sulcus chiasmaticus, not chiasmatis, right? It's here, right? So that's the posterior border, right? So what's the flow? Firstly, the orbital uh, part of the frontal bone here and here the lesser wing of the sphenoid and the cribriform plates lamina cribrosa osis uh, ethmoidalis this one is the ethmoid um, the ethmoid bone right the it, it is the foramens here uh, it's called a cribriform plate right Okay, uh, what are the prominent things you find there? Inside you find the foramen siccum, crystal galli, etc. Right. So, on this surface, you find the yuga cerebralia, right, forms, formed by the sulcus of the, and gyri of the brain, right. You also find the impressionist digitate and the crystal galli, I told you that one, right. What happens if there is a fracture in the anterior cranial fossa, right? There will be uh, cerebrospinal fluid rhinorrhea, right? The flow of the cerebrospinal fluid through the nose. And uh, this condition called black eye, right? When this bleeding goes to the uh, posterior orbit, uh, it's called black eye, right? So if you want to learn more about the black eye, you can just Google it. The middle cranial fossa, fossa crani media, right? So in this fossa, you find the anterior parts of the temporal lobes, right? So this is the middle cranial fossa. The boundaries. Anteriorly, you find uh, the lesser wings of the sphenoid, 
the anterior clinoid process, the processus clinoidae anteriores, and the sulcus chiasmatis, right? So, uh, this one is chiasmatic sulcus, right? The lesser wings of the sphenoid and the processus clinoidae anteriores, right? Then, um, what else? Okay, uh, before that, I need to show you the posterior board, of course. Posterior board is formed by the superior edges of the pyramid of the temporal bone, right? That's the superior edge. And also, is formed here by the dorsum cella of the sphenoid bone, right? Dorsum cella here. And the floor, the floor is formed by the cella tessica. The median part is also known as the Turkish saddle here, right? The cerebral surface of the greater wings of the sphenoid here. The cerebral surface of the squamous part of the temporal bone here. And the anterior surface of the pyramid of the temporal bone is here. Right, so what are the prominent features there? Okay, let's start with um here. I told you on the on this middle part, the hypophysial porta uh, po hypophysial fossa. That's where the um the pituitary gland will lodge in, right here. And then you also find the optic canal going to the orbit. The superior orbital fissure also going to the orbit. Uh, yeah, that's the communication between the orbit and the anterior cranial fossa. You find the round foramen, foramen rotundo. All right, uh, here you find this is the opening of the carotid canal here. And the foramen sacrum. You also find the foramen ovale, oval foramen, and the foramen spinosum. Right. On this part, on this part of the uh, temporal bone, on the actually anterior surface, right? So here what you find is, uh, firstly, you find the hiatus for the greater and lesser petrosal nerve. Uh, you also find the tegment tympan. Tegment tympan is the roof, the roof of the uh, tympanic cavity, right? So infection can actually spread from the tympanic cavity into the middle cranial fossa, right? Because it's, it's, it's very thin, right? Um, what else, what else, what else? So those are the most important things, right? And uh, this, there's an impression for the trigeminal ganglion, right? trigeminal uh, impression, and the acute eminence, right? The acute eminence is actually formed by the uh, superior semicircular canal of the internal ear, right? So what happens if there is a fracture, right? So if there is a fracture in the anterior cranial fossa, there can be um, cerebrospinal fluid and blood. Will, th those will actually flow through the ear, nose, and mouth. And because I told you, there is the internal acoustic meatus, right? Internal acoustic meatus, it, uh, it actually transports the important nerves, the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve, and the eighth cranial nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve, right? So they can be damaged. The posterior cranial fossa, fossa crani posterior, right? So in that fossa, that's where you will find the cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla oblongata, right? What are the boundaries? So anteriorly, the superior edges of the pyramid of the temporal bones here. And the dorsum cell of the sphenoid bone, the dorsum cell of the sphenoid bone here. Posteriorly, there is external occipital protuberance, but no, not external, because we're talking about the internal surface, right? So it's internal occipital protuberance, right? Internal occipital protuberance here. Uh, there is also this sulcus for the transverse uh, sinus. This one is called sulcus sinus transverse, right? Groove for the uh, 
plans the assignments, right? So don't say inter don't say external, but it's internal occipital protuberance here. Right. Uh the flow. What forms the flow of this fossa? The occipital bone for the most part, starting with the clevus here. These two lateral parts, right? The lateral parts of the occipital bone and the inferior part of the occipital squama here. Right. You also find the posterior surface of the pyramid of the temporal bones. This is the posterior surface of the pyramid of the temporal bone. You find the internal surface of the mastoid portion of the temporal bone here in purple. And the mastoid angle of the parietal bone. The mastoid angle of the parietal bone here in green. Alright, so what are the prominent features? Internal acoustic meatus, I told you like in the, on the previous slide. Um, there is also jugular foramen, hypoglossal canal. Uh, jugular tubercle right so those are the most prominent things if there is any fracture there will be a bruising over the mastoid region extending down over the stenocleidomastoid muscle because I told you it attaches on the on the what on the mastoid process right now let me show you some of the structures which end up and leaves this cranial fossa, right? So firstly, the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and the posterior cranial fossa, right? So anterior cranial fossa, firstly, the main thing you find the olfactory nerve, the first cranial nerve, right? So those nerves, they pass through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone here, right? Next, on the middle cranial fossa, the first thing is the optic canal, right? Through the optic canal, find the cranial nerve number two, the optic nerve. Through the superior orbital fissure, you find the oculomotor nerve, that's cranial nerve three. The trochlear nerve, cranial nerve four. The ophthalmic nerve, that's the first branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five. The abducens nerve, cranial nerve number six. Right, so this is communication uh, between the what, um, mostly between the orbit and the uh, middle cranial fossa. Next, there is a round foramen, foramen rotundum. Right, this one is actually like uh, it. It carries the maxillary nerve, the second branch of the trigeminal nerve. Right. Uh, there is a foramen ovale, foramen ovale over foramen. The main nerve there is the mandibular nerve. That's the third branch of the trigeminal nerve here, right? And there is foramen spinosum, you can see it below there, right? Then the internal acoustic meatus here. Um, this is now the posterior cranial fossa, right? So... It carries the vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight, and the facial number seven. You can also see here, uh, okay, firstly in green first. This one is the jugular foramen, carrying a cranial nerve nine, ten, and eleven. That's glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus, and the accessory nerves, respectively. Here is the hypoglossal nerve. Right, hypoglossal nerve, it passes through this canal, the hypoglossal canal, and is the nerve for the what? For the tongue, right? For the extra extrinsic muscles of the tongue, hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve number 12. Okay, so uh, this is a view of the foramen lucerum. I told you I'm going to show you this because a lot of people confuse this. They, if you look, or be, or on the base, you see like the uh, the internal carotid can artery passes through that foramen, but no, you can only see it. It just crosses. It doesn't pass through. What passes through are the, this emissary vein from the pterygoid plexus to the cavernous sinus, the meningeal bran branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery, right? So what crosses this the foramen, foramen lucerum, is the internal carotid artery, 
surrounded by this sympathetic plexus and uh, the vidian nerve right the nerve of the pterygoid canal right to the pterygoid canal and you know this one will be the greater petrosal nerve greater petrosal nerve is um, it's a branch of facial nerve right the sympathetic one don't worry about this we'll cover these nerves later right the next part I told you, I will show you uh, about the foramen magna, right? So these are the contents of the foramen magna, right? So from this anterior part, there is this apical ligament of the dense, superior band of the crossiform ligament, crossiform ligament, the tectorial membrane, membrana tectoria, right? Here on the middle, that's the spinal cord, right? On the back here, tonsils of the cerebellum and the vertebral arteries. You can also see the spinal root of the uh, accessory nerve, the cranial nerve number seven. Right? Don't worry about some of the labels. You cover them later. Right? When doing blood vessels, cranial nerves, and the anatomy of the spinal cord, of course. So you know about the dura meter, pia meter, etc. Don't worry. Now let's talk about uh, the nasal cavity, right? So this is the nasal cavity, guys. What you can, well, you are seeing here is the nasal cavity, and below it you can see the oral cavity, and on the back you can see uh, this one is the um, the pharynx. The pharynx having two parts: the oral pharynx. Here, corresponding to the oral cavity and the nasopharynx corresponding to the uh, nasal cavity All right so you can see the corners these two openings communication between the nasopharynx and the, and the nasal cavity and anterior you can see the nares right so uh, the nasal cavity it actually has a roof uh, and the flow right and there is a septum separating the right separating the nasal cavity into two parts right the nasal septum right um then the nasal cavity you know main important functions on the upper part is the part is the olfactory part and on the lower part most cases is for the what for the respiratory part humidifying the air uh, cleaning the air Right, so here you can see the flow of the eye, of, of the air, the flow of the air, right. Right, so, okay, I will show you the bones later. This is just, a, I found this image to be nice. That's why it's here, right, but we will dig deeper now. Right, so on the anterior view, you can see the piriform aperture. The opening right so its boundaries are the two nasal bones superiorly here and uh, the maxillary bones you can see them laterally and inferiorly bordering the what this piriform aperture next is uh, the what the hoane the hoane right so this is the hoane right so what are the borders of uh, the hoane right above you find the body of the sphenoid bone here the body of the sphenoid bone below the posterior free margin of the horizontal plate of the uh, palatine bones both of them that's the flow and uh, laterally the medial plate of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid this is the medial plate of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid and it's divided in the midline by the vomma. That's the medial part. The coani are isolated from each other by the vomma here. Right. Okay. Then uh, now let's talk about the inferior wall or the flow of the nasal cavity. Right. The flow is formed uh, by the... It's called what? It's actually the bony palate, right? The palatine process of both maxillae forms the anterior two thirds, and the horizontal place of the right and left palatine bones form the posterior one third, right? And I would like you to appreciate the maxillary sinus here, right? This image is, is very nice because uh, 
um, you will see the maxillary sinus later, right? But for now, just you know, the inferior wall is formed by bony palate. Bony palate is two parts, the anterior two-thirds formed by the uh, palatine processes of the maxilla and uh, posterior third is formed by the horizontal plates of the right and left palatine bones. The superior wall or the roof, right? So the roof is formed by the nasal part of the frontal bone, the cribriform plate of the ethmoid, and the sphenoid bone, right? I would like you to appreciate the sinuses, the frontal sinus and the sphenoidal sinus, right? Okay, that's the superior wall, right? The nasal part of the frontal bone, the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, and the body of the sphenoid bone. Next is the posterior wall. The posterior wall is actually very short because it's found only in the superior part. I mean, it's found in the superior part because the hoane are located below it, right? So you can see around here the sphenoidal aperture, right? So it is formed by the nasal surface of the body of the sphenoid bone with paired aperture of the sphenoid bone, right? So these are the paired aperture. Right, opening to the sphenoidal sinus. So this is the posterior wall. The lateral wall of the nasal cavity, right? So these are the bones which forms the lateral wall from anterior to the posterior side, right? So the nasal bone, the nasal surface of the body and the frontal process of the maxilla here, the lacrimal bone here, the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone forming, uh, so this one will be the superior and middle nasal conchae, right? So superior and middle nasal conchae are actually parts of the ethmoid bone. The inferior nasal conchae here is an independent bone. The perpendicular plate of the palatine bone here in blue. The medial plate of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid here, right? So that's the lateral um the lateral wall right um all right don't worry about uh, about it but I, I, what i wanted to mention is um the nasal meatus right so between the superior and me and middle nasal conch you find the superior uh, nasal meatus between the middle nasal conch and the inferior nasal conch you find the middle nasal meatus that is very important right you will see it and then here there will be an inferior nasal meatus between the flow and the inferior nasal conch right okay uh the medial wall of the bony part of the nasal septum right so, okay so this wall of the nasal cavity is called the medial wall or the bony part of the nasal septum septum nasi osseum Right, so uh, it's formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone here superiorly, the vomer on the posterior part, and the nasal crest of the maxillae and palatine bones inferiorly. Right, so this part you can see the nasal crest, right, the nasal crest of the palatine and the nasal crest of the maxilla, right. Uh, in addition to that, you can also find the nasal spine of the frontal bone above. The nasal spine of the frontal bone and the sphenoidal rostrum of the sphenoid bone posteriorly. Right. So if you look here, you find the rostrum. Right. Remember I told you that the, the vomer has ale, right, like wings. And in the middle there is a sulcus for the rostrum. Right. So if you look here, you can see the former right okay now about the nasal meatus right the nasal meatus is so the superior nasal conca is here the middle nasal conca is here these bones are the bones of the ethmoid bone the inferior nasal conca here is an independent bone right in between i told you the superior nasal meatus between the superior nasal conca and the middle nasal conca, 
the middle nasal meatus between the middle nasal conca and the inferior nasal conca. The inferior nasal meatus between the inferior nasal conca and the floor of the nasal cavity. There's another uh, nasal meatus. It's called the common nasal meatus. It's between the conca, right, between the lateral wall and the medial wall. It's called the common nasal meatus. Right, so the superior nasal meatus first, uh, right, it communicates with the posterior ethmoidal cells, cellular ethmoidales posteriores, right, and also communicates with the sphenoethmoidal recess, recessus sphenoethmoidales, right, that's the superior nasal meatus, not allowed to talk about. The medial nasal meatus, meatus nasalis medius, right, so it is a very important communications. Right, so uh, it communicates with the maxillary sinus, sinus maxillaris, or sinus and ram hymori. Right, so it communicates by the maxillary sinus by the means of the maxillary hiatus. It communicates with the frontal sinus by uh, the means of what the in ethmoidal infundibulum is just a funnel shaped opening, and the anterior and middle ethmoidal cells, cellulae ethmoidales anteriores and medi right so um they can be because of a lot of communications they can be inflammation of these sinuses right so if there is inflammation of the maxillary sinus it's called hemorrhitis frontitis inflammation of the frontal sinus here sphenoiditis inflammation of the uh, sphenoid sinus here right so you see the ethmoid cells here and here is the one the maxillary sinus right the inferior nasal meatus right this one is very important because there is a communication with the what with the orbit right so the nasal lacrimal canal canalis nasal lacrimalis it opens into the anterior part of the inferior nasal meatus right the common nasal meatus, I told you, this one is found between the nasal conche and the nasal septum. There is another one, the nasopharyngeal meatus, meatus nasopharyngeus, right? This one is uh, small and is found on the posterior part of the nasal cavity, which is located behind the nasal conche. Right, so this is another view, right? So in this view, you can see inside here there is cranial cavity and down oral cavity right so it's actually a section through the uh, ethmoid bone you can see the crystal galley here extending into the cranial cavity you can see the orbits here the orbit and its contents the superior nasal conche middle nasal conche and inferior nasal conche the oncinate process the maxillary sinus Right. All right. So this is the end. I want you to do something for me. I want you to draw uh, this table in your notebook. Right. So uh, you will name the foramen, the cranial cavity in which this foramen or canal leads to. What nerves and vessels this foramen or canal transmit? For example, if you take um what. Optic canal, right? Say optic canal. Which cavity? The middle cranial fossa. What does it transmit? It transmit uh, the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two, and the ophthalmic artery, right? So you need to do that. Uh, you need to cover. There are about um, 10 communications of the orbit. You need to know all of them. So you need to write them down. Six communications of the infratemporal fossa. Six communications of the pterygopalatine fossa. Right. And also you need to uh, revise the openings into and out of the uh, cranial fossa. That's anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.